Hello, my name is Hayley Dawson and I'll be going through this ILSA project video lecture on the skills required for interlingual re-speaking. We will begin with a description of what an interlingual re-speaker's job entails and will make comparisons between subtitling, simultaneous interpreting and intralingual re-speaking and why each one is important for interlingual re-speaking. A starting point for looking at the skills required for interlingual re-speaking may be to provide a description of what professionals are actually required to do. Before the task, an interlingual re-speaker researches terminology that is specific to the television programme or live event and prepares the speech recognition software with this vocabulary. During the task, an interlingual re-speaker listens to the original audio of a television programme or live event in one language and re-speaks it, so essentially simultaneously interprets it into another language while enunciating punctuation and adding special features such as sound labels. Errors are corrected immediately after the live translation is completed as a re-speaker monitors the on-screen output and uses voice commands or the keyboard to correct errors that occur. After the task, an interlingual re-speaker is expected to reflect on the results of their performance and to train the speech recognition software with any new or misrecognised terms that upon reflection may be required for future projects. Interlingual re-speaking could be understood as a hybrid form of interpreting and subtitling and it's understood that the skills for interlingual re-speaking may in fact come from these areas. Interlingual re-speaking uses the same process as simultaneous interpreting, which entails listening in one language and speaking in another at the same time. However, interlingual re-speaking involves a more complex process because re-speakers are required to work with speech recognition software to add punctuation, make pauses and monitor and correct the written output. We're going to take a closer look at the skills shared by interlingual re-speaking and simultaneous interpreting. First of all, dictation and oral punctuation. Dictation is one of the most important skills for re-speaking, as re-speakers must dictate a live translation clearly and without hesitation to facilitate the understanding of the software. Simultaneous interpreters are accustomed to speaking and articulating to make their in interpretation pleasant for a human audience to listen to. However, a re-speaker must dictate their live translation in a slightly robotic tone that's also flat and monotonous and add oral punctuation. Differences also exist between the audiences and the output of simultaneous interpreting and re-speaking. Both practices ultimately end in a text being made accessible for a human audience, but one is more direct than the other. A simultaneous interpreter interprets directly for a human audience that listens to the interpretation, whereas a re-speaker re-speaks into speech recognition software, which turns the utterances into on-screen text that a human audience can read. Therefore, a re-speaker must consider two audiences, one for the spoken output and one for the written output. Live error correction. As the re-speaker pauses to release text on screen, they must monitor the text to check whether there are any errors and carry out live error corrections. Translation errors may prove difficult to spot and correct because translation errors are as a result of decisions made by the re-speaker. However, recognition errors are much easier to spot and should be corrected where possible. Errors can be corrected by using voice commands or the keyboard. Managing speech recognition software. Software skills are a must for a re-speaker, since they will typically work in a booth with a microphone attached to speech recognition software. The task requires the constant use of software for dictation and correction purposes, 
as well as the use of software for audiovisual material when re-speaking live television broadcasts. Interpreters may not be used to working with as much software, but are familiar with hardware such as using a microphone in a booth, which depends on the setting, and a computer for thematic and lexical preparation through glossaries, databases and terminology searches, depending on the topic. Multitasking. Respeakers are not only required to listen in one language and speak in another, but there are also elements of multitasking within that process, as simultaneous interpreters and respeakers constantly deal with more than one unit of meaning. As mentioned before, respeakers must monitor their written output and edit or correct it while dealing with technology. Now, the process of interlingual respeaking is as though a respeaker has been asked to carry out different tasks while already multitasking. Live translation and speed. Speed is a skill that is shared by both interpreting and respeaking, as both tasks require verbal agility as soon as the message is received in the source language to reproduce the message in the target language with the least possible delay. This requires quick thinking to comprehend the message, reformulate it and express it while also processing the next unit of information. Source language comprehension, target language expression and verbal communication. Although dealing with two different languages, source language comprehension goes hand in hand with target language expression as they are equally important when producing a live translation and both require a proficient level of at least two languages in which the message in one language has to be understood very well and expressed in another language. Language Language skills are inevitably required as the interlingual re-speaker and simultaneous interpreter need to deal with two languages simultaneously. Short-term memory. Aside from live translation skills, the live nature of interlingual re-speaking calls for quick thinking and short-term memory skills to deal with the speed at which a live translation must be delivered. And finally, speaking in a pleasant tone. When it comes to enunciation, there is a difference between interpreting and re-speaking. An interpreter's immediate audience for their vocal output is a human audience, so that's why they should speak in a pleasant tone. However, a re-speaker's immediate audience is the speech recognition software, which requires re-speakers to dictate their translation in a rather flat and monotonous tone to facilitate the understanding of the software. Let's move on to subtitling skills. Interlingual respeaking and interlingual subtitling mainly share similarities in that the audio in one language is taken and transformed into written text in a different language. As we've already seen in this course, a different process is used to produce pre-recorded subtitles and live subtitles. Therefore, Interlingual live subtitling and pre-recorded subtitling mainly share a similarity in that their output is the same, which is that their output is text on screen. We've already gone over the skills that are highlighted in blue. The remaining skills are those shared by re-speaking and subtitling or those only used in subtitling. Source language comprehension and target language expression. The way the live subtitler or pre-recorded subtitler receives the text is the same, as both tasks deal with the source text via audiovisual means. However, source text comprehension may be harder to achieve with oral texts than with written ones. Aside from any texture information on screen, a re-speaker will only ever hear the source text, whereas a subtitler will hear it and, depending on the subtitling task, may also be able to read the template file of the intralingual subtitles or the script, which ultimately facilitates their comprehension. Differences between translation and live translation call for different forms of target language expression. Subtitling requires direct written expression, whereas interlingual re-speaking requires that the live translation be vocalised to appear as written text. 
language. In subtitling, language doubts can be swiftly remedied on the job using dictionaries and self-prepared glossaries. Due to the live nature of interlingual respeaking, one cannot search for terms on the job, but rather they must work under pressure to reproduce the message into a different language. Therefore, language preparation for respeaking must be carried out during the pre-process and points of revision and improvement during the post-process. In subtitling, this can be done as a subtitler, subtitles. Segmentation. Subtitlers may find that their knowledge of segmentation is useful for respeaking, as respeakers are required to pause for at least one second for the respoken text to be released on screen. The live nature of respeaking may not allow respeakers to focus on the line breaks as much as in pre recorded subtitling, however, it may help them to release text at appropriate times which would facilitate audience comprehension. Addition. Addition may be understood as any modification of the original text. It could consist of adding, omitting, reformulating or condensing the source text. Addition in respeaking entails editing a text live as you are respeaking and as you're listening to the next sentence. Pre-recorded subtitlers have more time to think about addition strategies. So that's why pre-recorded subtitles are usually edited much more effectively than live subtitles are. Speed. The live nature of interlingual respeaking versus, again, the pre-recorded nature of interlingual subtitling means the skills are used in different ways and are usually dictated by time pressure where interlingual respeaking is concerned. There's a constant time pressure during the peri process of respeaking due to the live nature of the task. However, in pre recorded subtitling, the subtitler marks the pace as opposed to the audiovisual text. Translation Translation skills are required by both respeaking and subtitling, but the live nature of respeaking means that it requires live translation skills whereas pre-recorded subtitling requires regular translation skills. It's understood that a pre-recorded subtitler must be able to provide fast and accurate translations to keep up with the demand for work. However, the live translation skill that is required for interlingual respeaking differs. Live translation also encompasses other skills such as multitasking and short-term memory which further highlights the similarity between the process of interlingual respeaking and simultaneous interpreting. Written punctuation. Dealing with punctuation in pre-recorded subtitling is easier than in live subtitling. The difference is that in respeaking, the punctuation is added orally. And finally, revision. Revision in subtitling means that a subtitler must usually revise the whole subtitling job before its completion. Live subtitlers do not have a chance to do this, again due to the live nature of the task. The equivalent to revision in respeaking may be the respeaker monitoring their respoken output and carrying out any live error corrections. In terms of inter- and intralingual respeaking, very little needs to be said about the similarities between them as they are similar in both process and product. All of the skills required for intralingual respeaking are also needed for interlingual respeaking. However, interlingual respeaking entails the added complexity of a language transfer, which is something that you'll be able to work with and practice extensively in modules 2b and 3a. When we bring all of the skills together, we can see that the skills noted in the intralingual respeaking section are those needed for the extra tasks that come with respeaking a text such as dictating the live translation to software while adding punctuation and correcting errors live. The presence of only two skills in the interpreting section emphasises that the vast majority of skills required for simultaneous interpreting are also essential for interlingual respeaking. Many differences lie between subtitling and respeaking,
and include the translation situation, so whether it's offline or live, and the translation mode, whether it's written or oral. For subtitling skills to become useful for interlingual respeaking, the skills must be adapted to respond to the live nature of the interlingual respeaking task. For example, translation to live translation, written punctuation to oral punctuation, and addition and revision to live error correction. I hope this video lecture has been helpful to explain the required skills for interlingual respeaking and that it highlights why in this course you've progressed from pre-recorded subtitling to simultaneous interpreting to intra and interlingual respeaking. Thank you.